Right, so we're just here in Pampanga, and this is the culinary capital of the Philippines. So much so that we've sort of dedicated two episodes to this, um, just because the food is so vast and so delicious. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go meet Francis from Carry On Sweets and Pastries. They're going to show us how to make pastillas. They're also going to show us how to make plantanillas, which is a recipe that's been handed down four generations, and they're one of the few people who still does plantanillas around here. We'll also go see Aching Lilian Borimao. She's going to show us all the traditional dishes from Pampanga and also the cooking methods that go with it. We'll get a bit of a history lesson and then we'll be on our way. Hi, good Hi morning, there. sir. Hi. I'm Kiel. Welcome to Angeles Museum. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, this building, this was our old city hall built in 1922. Pampanga is the first province created by the Spanish way back in 1571. Pampanga also acts as a temporary capital of the Philippines from 1762 till 1764 during the British occupation. The name Pampanga was given by the Spanish to the locals, meaning riverbank. Everywhere you look in Pampangan history, there is always a reference to food. Across the street is the uh, big church, also known as Pisambang Maragol. Right, yeah. Pisambang Maragol means huge church. Huge church, okay. In this area, these are the uh, depicting the Kapampangan culture. We are the supplier for the food for the Spaniards in Manila. Oh, really? Yes. That's why uh, the Spaniards and the Kapampangan, they have this good relationship. So this is what we call the dulang. It's a lower table. Yeah. So uh, this table used as a preparation table. You can sit like that and cross. Cross legged? Yes. When the Kapampangan eat here, their, their feet is like this. <laughs> like my legs are very long, so. Yes. There. <laughs> To build the church, a native male are required to uh, to work here. Age 40, uh, 16 to 60 years of age, uh, they are required to work 40 days a year, no food, no salary. For 40 days a year? Yes. Wow. And near towns are required to donate uh, a quota of eggs because the egg whites and egg the seashells yeah, are the yeah. mixtures. Uh, for the walls. For the walls. Yeah, yeah. So it was um, 1899 when the U.S. Army occupied this church mm -hmm. and transformed it into a hospital. Oh, so they transformed this Yes, into a during hospital. the Filipino American War. So, how long was this the hospital for? Um, how many years? From at least uh, 1899 to 1902. It was 1902 when they moved to Fort Stutzenberg. Right. Yes. Our first stop in Pampanga is Carry On Sweets and Pastries in San Fernando. This pastry shop has been around since 1946 and their pastillas and plantanillas have really stood the test of time. Okay, so this is where all the pastilla magic happens. Right here we have Carabao's milk that gets delivered fresh every single morning. And the difference between Carabao's milk and cow's milk is the fat content. Carabas milk contains a lot, a lot of fat. Carabas milk is almost halfway between milk and cream. The only difference between milk and cream is the fat content, and this is probably just about halfway between the two of them. So the Carabas milk goes into the big vats over here. So fresh Carabas milk, sugar is then added, and then sort of gets stirred. And you can see these guys are constantly stirring it all of the time, and the reason for that is because milk burns so, so quickly, right? Um, Basically, what happens is it reduces, which leaves a lot of the fat content and the sugar. And then you can see here, the consistency of it is really, really thick. So the only way that they test it is visually to sort of have a look at it and see how thick it is. And that just comes from years and years of experience. And this has been cooking for a while, so it's really, really thick fat content and the sugar. It then gets taken out and then gets put on trays, and then let's go have a look how it gets cut and how it gets made.
basically they just cut this now into strips just to mark where they need to cut them. So once they've done it that way, it's then time to mark it with a different size cutter from this side across so that they know where to cut them. So these ones are a lot wider and this is actually used to cut it. So this cuts all the way through like that. I've eaten a lot of pastillas before, but this is not as sweet as the ones I've tasted before. You can taste the fat content, and that's down to the carabas milk. It's high, high in fat content. These are really, really smooth. It's not as sweet as what I thought it would be. This is really, really good. I'm going to steal another off cut. Shut up, huh? Yeah, to cut on these lines, like she's doing very quickly, is very, very difficult, right? It's not as easy as what it seems. I think it's not a bad job for a first timer, right? This is plantanilias. Right, basically, what this is, it is just egg yolks that's been whisked up. There's no flour, there's no sugar in it whatsoever. And then in here is a stock syrup. So what they're going to do is they are going to cook the egg yolk in the stock syrup. So it sort of soaks up all of that sugar. Bigger. Okay. Approval. Approve, huh? It was Lola Lourdes, carry on, who started this actually. And it's gone down from four generations to what it is now. So once these are cooked in the syrup, they then take the pastilla mix over here. And there you can see they sort of put it in the middle and then just sort of gets folded over like that into like a little taco shape. Okay, like that. So it's now time to taste it. Wow, that's really good. And the egg, the egg yolk sort of when you put it in your mouth, it vanishes. And that's because there's no flour, there's no sugar. That's very nice, huh? very good. Mm. We then head to Aching Lilian Borromeo in Mexico. She is considered the keeper of Pampangan cuisine. She also invites guests to her house and shows them the old recipes and how to cook them. I was privileged enough to cook beside her while she shows me how to cook the old traditional Pampangan recipes. Okay, so what is the first dish you are gonna show us? I'm going to show you the umba. Okay. In Kapampangan we call this uh, estofado umbabi. All right, okay. Yeah. And what's the first step? I see we have sugar cane here. Yes, the, we line the pot with the sugar cane. Okay. And then we put the pork here and all the ingredients all together with water. And this is the pork belly? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Is there a reason why you use pork belly? In the olden times, they used the, the, the pork taken here. The, the, From the, the neck. neck. The yes. neck, yes. Yeah. Because that will uh, save uh, save the pork from getting rotten okay. because there were no there was no electricity that time. Oh to so they had to utilize the whole yes, pig in one day. Yes, so this is one way of doing that, the estupado and then we have the adobo all uh, accompanied with uh, uh, vinegar. Vinegar to stop the bacteria. Yes. Okay. Alright. And then we have sugar cane. Yes. 
We have sugar cane, black pepper, a little sugar. Okay. We have garlic, and they bay leaf, uh, onions, a little of soy sauce, and okay. water. The first step is to line the pot with the sugar cane. Okay. And then we'll put the meat and all the ingredients Good. all together. That's it. Cover and then it. On and a then low heat? Low heat. It's uh, because kapampan cooking is more of slow cooking. Right, okay. Yeah. And uh, perhaps after two or three hours. And the pork is nice and tender. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay, so what does the banana leaf actually do there? We use this to seal the meat. The so that all the flavors and all, stay yeah, in. And all the flavors will be in. Does it add any flavor to the dish? Or? Uh, the banana leaves add. Okay. Okay, so that's a very important part. Yes. Okay. Of From time to time, you have to see to it that there is always liquid. Otherwise, yes. it will be get burned. And that is on a very, very low flame? Yes. Okay. That's a really nice contradiction between the saltiness of the soy sauce and the sugar cane, the sweetness. I think yes. that's going to be a very, yes. very nice and dish. And kapampan food is mostly cooked that way. But that's on a nice low flame. Yes. Are we going to move to the next dish? Yes, which is bogotong asan. Which is the fish? Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, so what kind of fish is this? It's meal fish. Bangos. Large bangos. Large bangos. Okay. Uh, All the ingredients go in here? Yes. We have alagao, kamyas, a little soy, soy sauce. sauce, and then we have tomatoes, chopped onions, pepper, and a little oil. Our cooking is more of the base. There's no exact measurement. That's the beauty about cooking, right? There's yes. no exact measurement. That's why it's called culinary art. Exactly. <laughs> And, and a then, little of oil. Good. Okay, yeah. The purpose of the oil here mm -hmm. is uh, to, so that the fish will not stick at the bottom of the oil. Okay. The colors are really nice, huh? green, yes. red. <laughs> we get all of those. Wow, that smells really nice. Then we'll stuff the fish. So there? Yes. All right. Fat. Okay, so all of the liquid and the oil is yes. still underneath. Okay, so lay put that on top. So it's like we're putting the fish to bed. Yes. Almost, right? <laughs> yes. All of these yes. lovely flavors. Yes. Okay? Okay, I'll cover it and put it on fire. Okay. Okay, so what's the next dish? This is the brazo de maiz. It is taken from the recipe brazo de la reina or brazo de mercedes. Okay. We just want to melt yes, the butter. Yes, melt the butter. Then put it off the fire. Okay. Put it here. here. And now you add the milk. Gradually add the milk, only one. Okay. Keep stirring. So basically, French culinary terms. Yes, yes. That's you're making true. a roux, and then yes. you're adding the carabas milk yes. to it. Yes. Oh, okay. That's where we adapted it. Yeah. The so carabas milk is quite a quite a prominent ingredient in um, a panga food, right? Yes, yes, yes. Then, yes. then let it boil. Mm -hmm. Keep on stirring to avoid yeah. uh, burning at the bottom. Yep. And then we will be adding the slightly beaten egg yolks and the corn, sugar and corn. Okay. After that, it's done. Then it's done. And that's the filling? Yes. And then you also have to make a the meringue? Mar yes, out of the egg whites.
it's now time to taste it, right? All of that hard work has now paid off. It's tasting time. Mm. Wow. Wow. All the textures is it's so soft, huh? Really nice. Wow. Very, really good. Very good. It's not as sweet as what I thought it would be, but I could easily finish a whole one easily. Not a problem. Okay, so the next dish is? Panecillo de San Nicolas. Okay. And this is one of the oldest cookies we have because this was brought here in 1600. Wow. Now for the molds we have, this was the oldest, not, not, this is only a repro. Okay. The, but the design, this is the design that the Spaniards brought here. Yeah. But for the Kapampans, the Filipinos, they did not like that. They wanted something more. Wow. That's carved by hand. Yes. So we start with the, the making of the. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, this is about one, one half cup, no? Yes. We we'll add sugar. Mm -hmm. Then I'll add my egg yolks. Egg yolks. Yes. And then the coconut milk, milk. a portion of uh, cornstarch. Mm -hmm. I'll put the baking powder, one tablespoon. Yep. And then we'll be adding oil. Yep. Vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be adding another. So it's equal same parts. Same amount, yes. Equal parts of cornstarch. Uh, this to is the third class flour. Third class flour. But uh, if, uh, you can use a uh, special flour, the cake flour, if you cake want flour, to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think what you're doing here, keeping the old recipes alive is very, very important these days. I think it's something yes. that people don't realize, yes. that if you don't pass the recipes on, it's gonna die, right? Yeah, when I'll be buried, it will be buried together with me. Oh, wow. Yes, that. Okay. Putting it here, now you will need this. Inside this the flour. If you press it and there's mm -hmm. no more sticky inside in the middle, then it's done. Press it now. Yeah. 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 You need it there now. I'll give you a little oil, drops of oil. Yep. Just until all of the flour is gone on the outside? Yes. Now we will divide it into equal parts. We just yeah. I must say, I really respect Aching Lilian for what she's doing here. Sometimes people forget about the culinary history and need to be reminded. In my opinion, culinary history and culture go hand in hand. You forget one and the other might just disappear. Next time on Market to Master, we continue our travels through the culinary capital. We cook some modern day classics and compare the present day Sisi to its 17th century version. I can't say